Hello and welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen Swing Wing Sing here Today we are going to build the 172nd Hawk Trainer Mark 1 version and this is a kit from Airfix If you haven't already seen the unboxing I will leave a link to the unboxing video which I did a couple of days back so you can click on that and visit the unboxing so here I start with the obvious first step as per the instructions, which is constructing the cockpit floor and the other parts like the seat, the instrument panel and the control column. Here you can see me using my X-Acto knife to clean up the little bit of flash that was left off after cutting the parts out from the sprues. Now the assembly of the cockpit is very pleasurable. It builds up itself and here you can see me using my go-to glue, which is very quick cyanoacrylate glue i use this uh, glue for building all my models and as you can see the fit of the parts is extremely good it reminded me of the hawks that i've done earlier as well uh, the cockpit assembly is pretty much similar there is no difference in either the trainer mark one or the mark hundreds so the assembly of the cockpit is pretty much the same i almost remembered the uh, steps by heart so I didn't even refer to the uh, instruction sheet for constructing the cockpit. Now, once the uh, front bulkhead was assembled and the cockpit was uh, basically ready, it was time to attach the nose wheel. Now at this point I had decided to go for a wheels up configuration because I wanted to show my uh, hawk in flight so I decided to do away with the nose wheel but in case you're wishing to have a gear down configuration this is the place where you assemble it. Now the kit comes with two pilot figures and they come with separate arms so you can position the arms the way you like. Uh, I in fact went for the standard positioning of the arms which is downwards. Uh, holding the throttle and stick and at this point I had decided to go for a Royal Saudi Air Force Hawk and that's the reason why you see me painting their overalls in this sand color now here's the uh, Abro number 89 matte light gray and I use this to basically paint up the cockpit interiors uh, also the seat, the instrument panel and the cockpit floor because the hawk cockpits are grey. So here you can see that it's given a very nice matte finish to the interiors of the cockpit. Now I used my surgical knife. Comes in very handy when you're cutting out the decals from the decal sheet. Uh, this is basically very sharp and it cuts out the decal sheet within no time. Then using my standard procedure of applying the decals, I took warm water inside a little container, used my white glue and then watered it down a little bit, mixed it around with a old brush and then dipped the decals in the warm water for about 30 seconds, applied the uh, watered down PVA glue in the place where the decals would go then applied the decals in their position and then wiped off the excess with a cotton q-tip. I used my pair of snippers then to cut out the fuselage halves from their sprues and then went for a dry test fitting to ensure that everything fits as expected. Now step number three calls for the assembly of the engine afterburner section and also says that you need to add five grams of weight in the nose but since mine will be an in-flight configuration i did not need any of those after having dry fitted and tested the fit of the fuselage here you can see that i have assembled the two fuselage halves together and you can see that the uh, standard airfix problems were of the uh, seam line all along the uh, fuselage halves is something that will have to be addressed at a later stage. Now step number five and six are the assembly of the air intakes and they have parts 15A, 16A 
to be assembled together and followed by 17A and 18A. And as you can see, there's a mismatch in the alignment, but then I used some common sense and used 15A with 17A and 16A with 18A, and that gave me a much better alignment of the air intake parts here. So there's an error with the Airfix instructions of the air intakes. Now, step number seven is the assembly of the rear dashboard for the instrument panel behind the front seat. So as you can see here, when I tried to assemble it, you know, there, there's a huge gap and it's not aligning correctly. So I had to trim out the rear instrument panel to make the dashboard align correctly. Now, step number nine is the standard Airfix instruction of uh, drilling out holes in the lower section of the wing assembly. Uh, these holes are meant for the assembly of the hard points. So I simply took my X-Acto knife and started drilling out those holes. Now in the uh, Saudi Hawks, there are four hard points as compared to the uh, British Hawks. These extra two underwing hard points were to allow for the configuration of the AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles on the Saudi Hawks. And now you can see me assembling the top surfaces of the wings. I simply used Fevi-Quick Sinoacrylate glue to glue the uh, top surfaces of the wings together. And you can see that the assembly is absolutely perfect. Step number 10 is the attachment of the wing fences and step number 11 of the uh, flap actuators and I decided to leave them out at this moment because these parts are really small and have the uh, risk of getting them knocked out while building. So I will revisit them and I moved straight to step number 12. Step number 12 is the attachment of the uh, canopy section and of course the wings. Now, as I started attaching the wings uh, underneath, I found that there is an issue with the width of the center portion of the wing and that wouldn't fit. So I had to sand it off and here you can see me doing that. And once I sanded it off a little bit, the fit was absolutely perfect. The uh, next step is the attachment of the horizontal tail surfaces and the instructions show you that they have a dihedral of 80 degrees. But that isn't a problem with the Airfix parts because they have their locator pins which are fixed at a particular angle and they will go in only in one position so that the end result is that they fix at an 80 degrees dihedral angle. The avionics panel cover behind the rear cockpit again reminded me of a previous uh, Airfix Hawk kit and this doesn't fit correctly so the rear bulkhead has to be trimmed off significantly and sanded smooth uh, in order to make the uh, rear panel fit now this is an issue with almost all airfix hawk kits and you need some significant amount of sanding down there i followed this up with the optional step number 13 which shows you to have the air brake either open or closed this fits in only in one direction with the indent facing in front. So it just aligns very nicely. And once you close up the uh, air brakes, it's a very simple uh, fix to have the ventral fins assembled. I then moved on to the next optional step, which is either to have the gear bay doors open or closed. If you have them open, you'll have to construct the undercarriage, which so I will use the parts that are given to have the undercarriage doors closed and you can see that the fit is absolutely perfect part numbers 5d and 6d are the left and right nose gear bay door covers and you have the option to keep it open or closed i just use the part that would keep it closed and at this point i referred back to step number 7d which is the optional step to have your nose undercarriage gear bay door closed The next step was to have the weapons assembled. So you have the drop tanks, you have the hard points, and you have the uh, fins for the Sidewinder missiles. Now these fins are really nice. They just slot into the Sidewinder missile assembly like so, and you can just put a little bit of glue to fix it. I then came back to step number 11 and 10 and began fitting the um, 
flap actuators on the underside of the wings and the wing fences on top. Now, the flap actuators are basically differently sized, so you'll have to be a little careful of which size you're putting where. The next step of the assembly was to fill up the uh, seam line gaps that were there, and these seam line gaps are pretty common on the Airfix Hawks. So I started off with filling up the nose seam line and then the uh, avionics bay uh, seam line, the attachment of the wing roots to the uh, fuselage, and the entire seam line stretching from the wing root to the nose. Finally, I came to the point where I would mask the canopy. So I cut it off the sprues, also the uh, windshield splitter. And then I used Tamiya masking tape and aligned it all along the frame of the canopy. Now the Hawk canopy is a single piece canopy, so it's pretty simple to mask. So I just used it along the frame and then for the rest of the uh, canopy, I used more pieces of Tamiya masking tape. So the next step before closing up the canopy was to paint up the front and the rear cockpit dashboards. And here you can see me brush painting, ferric rail black, thinned with a little bit of water and liberally applying it over the uh, front and the rear sections. Last step before the closing of the canopy was to attach the canopy uh, splitter and I simply did this using white glue which is Fevicol. And then finally closed up the canopy and began attaching the uh, centerline gun pod and also started working on the uh, hard points Now, step before painting is to clean up the whole body with some IPA. You know, this helps to remove all the dust and dirt that has been collecting over all the days that uh, the model has been lying outside being worked upon. So I did that. And this is the first time now I tried this pre-shading step. This is simply brush painting all the panels with uh, Fevicryl Black. Uh, I've never tried this method. I wanted to see how good uh, this method is of course it does help me to speed up my process and make the uh, pre-shading more detailed and then I followed it up with the first base coat of the camouflage which is the sand color this is Fevicryl sand which was improvised by mixing brown and white and yellow in various uh, proportions this mix has been thinned down with water and is being sprayed from my Sparmax airbrush at 40 PSI. Now, this was then followed by masking off the uh, brown camo pattern with uh, blue tack. And once the uh, camo pattern was masked, I used the uh, brown or the dead leaf color. Basically, this is a mix of brown, white and a lot of red uh, in order to bring the... Uh, color value up to what it is on the Saudi Hawks. Again, this is simply thinned with water and being sprayed from my Sparmax airbrush at about 15 to 20 PSI. I then left the paint to dry for about eight to nine hours. And next day I began removing the uh, blue tack masking uh, just to see how good the uh, camo has come out and it really looks good. Now this is a wraparound camo, so the Saudi Hawks have the camo stretching to the underneath of the uh, body as well. All right, tedious job, but the third camo pattern had to be painted. And here you can see that I have masked off the third camo pattern with blue tack. Now, if you'll notice the uh, Saudi Hawks, you'll probably say that, you know, the third camo pattern is black. But if you zoom into that picture, you'll see that it is a very, very dark shade of green. So I improvised that green by mixing sap green and black and in the usual way thinned it down with water and sprayed it onto the uh, body of the aircraft with my Sparmax airbrush at about 10 PSI. All right, so then I started removing the uh, canopy masking and I noticed that, you know, some paint had invariably gotten through the uh, masking so I used a 
toothpick dampened with IPA and simply scraped off the excess paint that was there on the canopy. I then used the uh, Tamiya fine and finishing compounds to polish off the canopy to a nice and shiny finish. And once the canopy was polished off, I dipped it in future for the final glass like finish. Now, the last step was to apply the decals and I had printed them at home because these are not included within the kit. The kit only comes with the Royal Air Force decals. Uh, so all of these decals are printed at home. If you want to know how I print my own decals, I will leave a link to the tutorial I did some time back. Uh, in the description below you can refer to that if you so wish finally after the decal procedure was over the last step was to fix the canopy and i used white glue and attached the canopy now the use of white glue is it doesn't fog up the canopy and then finally i moved on to the last phase which is the weathering phase i created a dark brown wash with camlin chalk pastels and thinned it down with water and dishwashing liquid and then once the uh, wash was dry I wiped it off with a kitchen towel and fine-tuned the weathering with a cotton q-tip. Alright, so here we are. These are the beauty shots of the Airfix 172nd scale Hawk 65 from the Royal Saudi Air Force number 37 squadron. You can see that the camo has turned out pretty nice and I'm pretty chuffed with the way the entire model has built up. I did face a lot of challenges, the biggest ones being uh, printing the Saudi Air Force decals because there are a lot of markings especially the Arabic markings and the uh, squadron markings of the 37 squadron uh, and the wraparound camo was the first one for me so that's a big challenge that I have overcome plus uh, you know getting the right tonality of the colors of the camouflage is another challenge that I had to face I would recommend this for an intermediate and advanced modeler but a beginner would need a lot of experience in order to construct this kit uh, but overall, this is a great kit to work with, especially considering that 90% of the parts fit perfectly. So if you enjoyed this video and you like the content, please click the thumbs up. Do consider subscribing because that helps my channel grow. Please comment because I like to read the comments and reply to all of them. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you again in the next one. Bye bye.